Hi, this is Steve from TorNewEngland.org. Hey, we, we're here right now in the Boston Public Gardens. And we're with a really awesome lady right now joining us. And we're going to talk about the beautiful, awesome, very colorful flowers with many different colors here. And they're all beautiful. And really, they don't have a smell, but they're really beautiful to see here in the garden. And these are some of the, they have different groups here that actually uh, manage these flowers and keep them beautiful. No, so, uh, in terms of the roses, there's only one group. It's named the Rose Brigade. I organized it in 1988, before you were born. And we've been taking care of these four roses ever since. And we have all volunteers, and our volunteers come and go. Sometimes they leave the city. But we've had some people who've been with us for five years. And, uh, very, very dedicated, and we get new people all the time. We have a couple of college students. Sometimes once we had a, a six and an eight year old. <laughs> wow. And so we've had people from all ages. And we our alumni group now with people all over the world in the United States it is about um, over 500 people. So are these, these flowers here, are they a, a special breed? Or are, we, are they different? Uh, these big, 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 beautiful flowers. Are they, I mean, are they, are they different from each other? I mean, I see the color different on them. But are they different individually? That they different species? Or? I was going to ask Okay. Uh, we plant hybrid teas. All the roses in this bed are what are called hybrid tea roses. T-E-A, like the tea. Oh, okay. Great. And hybrid teas generally are showpiece roses, as you can tell. And they, we want something in the public garden that really stands out for people. And so you, you can see over there, just looking from here. And uh, we, so that we plant hybrid teas of special kind, we the full ones that have um, been trained, I mean, who have been certified to be very robust. Because there's a lot of pollution in Boston, and these roses undergo a lot. And so, we plant hybrid teas, which have many, many colors, hundreds of colors. And I seek out the ones from all over the country, and sometimes abroad, um, that have special colors. And that's, that's what they are. This is a newbie. It will, it's only planted last fall, and it will grow to five and a half feet wow. and that's why it's in the middle of the bed here we had to recover the bed because of some losses and that's it there are they're special specimen roses hybrid teas do you guys take care of the other ones along with the edges here no 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 those take care of by park department we do four rose beds the one you see right over there and this one and then you know when you keep on going down that you see the George Washington statue. On either side of the George Washington statue are large rose beds. Really large. Wow. And that's how we're going right now. Oh wow. Maybe we should travel down there with you. Yes. To actually take a pic some video of you of your group uh, yes. maintaining the gardens. Yes, you can do that. Great. So we're here with Leslie? Leslie Adams. Yeah. Leslie Adams, who is the co-founder of the Friends of the Boston Garden. Really, really great this. Yeah, so, so I'll tell you what, I, I'm the chair of the board of the Friends of the Public Garden. And so we think about the Public Garden, but we also take care of the Boston Common and the Commonwealth Avenue Mall. But this is the jewel, as you know, of all the parks. And we're here right now in one of our rose beds. So we have four rose beds, um, and this one is called the Tiffany Rose Bed. Ooh! So, and the Friends of the Public Garden celebrated our 50th anniversary last Congratulations. year. Congratulations! Yeah. So we're pretty excited. We partner with the Parks Department in the City of Boston for the care of those three parks. 
Um, our spend now has increased to $2 million a year. Whoa. And we're very, very lucky that we have many, many uh, friends and supporters who help us do that through private donations. And then we have an amazing group of volunteers. And so you see all these wonderful people. Um, this, this group is called the Rose Brigade. And this was started by China Phillips, I mean China Phillips, China Altman, not the musician, but China, Phillip, uh, China Altman over there. She is an expert on all things of roses. So she comes out on Tuesdays, traditionally, and she has a group of loyal volunteers and followers, and they come and they clip all these beautiful roses. These, so. things, these flowers are so awesome, especially to be within the bed itself. It's, just, it's amazing, wow. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So you should smell some of them. Oh, really yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've already started when I was over on the other side of the, when we did the China uh, yeah. interview. I was over there smelling the rose. I go, wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, so it's really nice. And, um, you know, China and everybody works so hard to make it so pretty for everybody who walks through the public garden every day. It's a great commute, right? It is. To walk through here. And these last sort of 16 months, the parks have been even more important um, because everybody wants to just get a little outside a little bit and enjoy being in, in sort of nature and fresh air. These uh, these rose beds, these rose beds that we have, I think are especially important because it's just they they're like uh, ambassador to our our city. Right. Well, I think that's the way about all our parks, right? So many people who live here come but so many people who come to the city of Boston are amazed. And China over the years has probably told you, but she's met people from all over the world who stopped to talk to her about the roses and ask her questions. And so it's really, it's quite fun. Especially when these, the particular garden, the, gar the garden here and the, the common itself is part of the Olmstead um, uh, land area. Right, well, you know, the, um, the common was before even Olmsted, right? So that was our first public space. It was a park, really the first public grazing area started uh, by the residents of the city of Boston. And then eventually you had the Emerald Necklace um, with the beautiful Franklin Park, uh, which is amazing. And then all the connecting parks throughout the city of Boston that connect. Um, and so, you know, we're fortunate that, yes, the Common was the sort of the original park of the city of Boston and really the nation's first public park. The, uh, the garden is the nation's first public botanical garden. Wow. So, anyways, we are very fortunate in our city of Boston to have so much history. We live so close to Franklin Park ourselves, within probably... Five minutes. About five minutes from the right I, I grew up near there, and so it's a gem, and it's really a place I always urge people who come to Boston to go and see because it's so beautiful. I love it. I really That's love what it. what they call the Emerald Necklace, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's part of the Emerald Necklace. That's mm -hmm. right. And now, I, you know, I, I'm kind of leaning off the story here for a second. You know, I've heard so many things through the years about so many things happening at the Boston Commons itself. Mm -hmm. um, hangings. And I know that it had it's had a long history. Long history, yeah. Well, long history. Different things happening, uh, being that a lot of the troops during the that's right. British. They, that's right. Uh, the troops were uh, there. Um, the Friends of the Public Garden just recently partnered with the City of Boston and the National Parks for the restoration of the Shaw 54th Memorial, which is up at the corner. Because what's interesting is in these three parks is one of the largest collections of the City of Boston's public art. And that's also maintained and um, cared for by the Friends of the Public Garden. That's some great stuff. Yeah, so it's worth, it's really worth exploring all the corners of these parks. To me, personally, being a, you know, a New Englander, I've been here all my life, and I, I don't think there's any place I'd rather be than here in New England, especially Boston and Massachusetts itself, because you get the four uh, seasons of the year, and it's yeah. just, no matter what time of year, you come even to the, the commons here, it's awesome. It's really pretty all the time in the parks. It really is. We're lucky. Yeah. I just, I don't think there's any place I'd rather be. Good. Well, we're glad you're here. It was thank lovely. you very much. I got my gloves. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so thank you, Leslie, for your thank time. Thank you very and much. Thank you. We, we're really enjoying seeing all these beautiful, awesome volunteers you have here. Good. Helping you all. And all well led by our leaders over there. Yeah. So China and Carl are. She's doing a open. fantastic job. Yeah. Well, thank I hope, you. I, I just, so many years of great beauty, and I hope it continues for for years, many years past our, our many time. Many more. <laughs> this is an interesting though. Is this a spreader? 
Yeah, it's just, you know what, it's been trimmed, so that's why it looks so interesting. It's just a traditional sort of bush, but what it's happened is it's been trimmed in that spiral, which is kind of pretty. Yeah. The only problem is, of course, it becomes a, um, a home for the rodents that we were oh. talking about. <laughs> it looks pretty, but I wouldn't get too close. <laughs> Uh-oh. So, okay. All right. Well, we thank you for watching another great episode of TorinoEngland.org here in the great city of Boston, Massachusetts. Stay tuned for more great videos coming in the near future.